Welcome to Ultimate Orlando Clicks. I'm your host, Kevin, and this week we are getting started over at the Richard Petty Driving Experience, where we saw that there was an exotic car outside of the exotic car uh, entrance, kind of advertising it. We're here not to look at the exotic cars, though I haven't been back to show you these um, since they've been around, uh, but rather something a little bit more new. They've got a couple of cars type cars available now. Uh, there's this one you see here, a blue one, and then uh, a red one as well. Uh, they are not the characters from the, the movie directly, although uh, they're kind of, I guess, minor characters from the movie. Um, they were both in the Piston Cup race, etc., and they have their own names and, and supposed backstories, but they're there for uh, to get the kids excited about going along on ride-alongs. Uh, so they have ride-alongs for $60, $59 for kids as well. Now, we're also at the Magic Kingdom to look at this tent over in the back of the uh, Storybook Circus area, which, as you can see, has removed its FastPass Plus kiosks and put in some furniture. Now, the furniture is there because you might be sitting around for a while uh, looking and waiting for these boxes. Now, what's inside these boxes? It's a charging station, including some USB plugs, actually. You can see those in the, in the back there. Now, they've got some benches, uh, some couches, uh, some additional furniture that uh, looks as though it's supposed to be from that nearby meet and greet area. So there's the theme to Donaldo in this case. Um, and some other different kinds of comfortable chairs, really. They didn't go with just one style. I think they were obviously trying to make it seem eclectic, also with this uh, crazy mirror here. There's a new magic band available. This is for $25. It's the Haunted Mansion themed magic band. And it comes in gray. Give you a couple of views here of that bridge construction in progress in the hub. A couple of different angles for you. And then over at the people mover, this crane is uh, presumably there to install the Astro Orbiter pieces. I'm guessing that they're coming back within this week. From the monorail, here's a view of the Polynesian sign and then the new sign going in below it. So I think we might actually see this one go away when the new one comes in, but we'll see exactly what happens. Now we are here on the road on the way to downtown Disney and the, you can see that the lanes that we're about to drive in here are new and the older lanes are now blocked off. So they've got four lanes on this side going toward downtown Disney uh, from the Epcot area. So this is a, a second later. You can see downtown Disney coming um, visible here over the rise and all the construction going in on the right. Now they've done a couple of things here. First, the uh, the traffic light here that you see, this bar, is the older one. It is turned off. The traffic light that you see on strings here is the newer one. It's on attached to this concrete pole. That's kind of more the hurricane traffic light. It's, um, it's better for uh, what you want to have in case there is a hurricane because it just swings instead of falls over, such as these other ones do. So they've obviously retrofitted the thing uh, for hurricane season. They've done the same at this next intersection. And you can see these tall pylons going in. This is going to be that bridge where the uh, Interstate 4 access comes towards downtown Disney. And so here's that, that, that part of the bridge going into the parking structure. We'll go over on the street I'm standing on here uh, and then um, towards Interstate 4. There's another view of that from the complete side. Now they've also got some ramps going in place finally. And the parking structure is starting to look like a parking structure with ramps every so often. In downtown Disney itself, the marketplace, this little shop here was once home to a lefty or leftorium, some sort of left-handed um, store. Uh, apparently since April, it's been home to Happy Hound. and I have not noticed it, have not been over here, I guess, since April to see it. It's all about, um, obviously, not just pets, but uh, specifically dogs. So they've got everything from leashes to dog toys to dog clothing and dog tags and keychains having to do with dogs and dog collars and yes dog magnets as well now from roughly that same area looking across the little lagoon here you see a couple of things first this is once where the marina was so the uh, captain jacks and so forth was over here um, and then uh, this is now a bridge and then also this uh, this fountain element is a, is a completely new feature since obviously there were watercraft in this area of the lagoon before so it is turned on I haven't seen what it does at night though it's probably lit up with colored lights there's the bridge still under construction still a lot going on they've got uh, this distinctive iron feature across the middle of it and if we go over to the other side near rainforest you can see uh, some concept art of what the bridge will look like when it's done there's that iron feature we just saw a moment ago and make it look like a suspension bridge and people will cross over that way 
Now there is a new bridge open. This is all the way at the end of downtown Disney, at the end of Marketplace. Uh, the buses, the bus loop is right behind me as I take this picture. Uh, and this bridge connects us to Saratoga Springs. There was a way around the other side of this lagoon to go to Saratoga Springs before, but this connects all the way through. Or you can take this little path down to the side here and get on the boat. So these are the boats now going over to the other parts of downtown Disney. And you can see a new restaurant construction in the back there. There's another angle of that same. And here's a third angle of that same area coming around the other side of it. And here's what it looks like from across the lake, directly across from that new construction. You can see that they're almost done with the superstructure for those buildings. And then looking back toward Rainforest Cafe, you can see that they've closed off um, this area here because the, uh, the outside area is a construction zone, really. So the lava lounge um, doesn't go all the way out to the end at the moment. Now, this uh, Saturday night was the Villains Unleashed party. It's a private party where you paid $67 per adult to come in and celebrate meeting the, uh, the Disney villains. So they gave us a lanyard once you get inside, and of course they have their special uh, um, tour guide map uh, for the event. Uh, and a lot of the same logo throughout the park. Now, um, there was a stage show that kicked it off, and they showed Hades and uh, Megara as the two main hosts and hostesses, and Pain and Panic as well, and then some fire effects and so forth. Uh, and uh, they go through and explain that they're going to unleash onto the park 50 Disney villains. And so we got to see a number of Disney villains, including these new ones here. Uh, Hamster Feel is a, a new one that they've not had in the parks before. Gantu, I guess they have, but uh, not frequently. Um, and, uh, and a lot of these characters are ones that um, we don't see often. We have seen before. So the costumes previously existed. Some of them are from parades, uh, and they are more commonly seen than others. Um, but having all of the villains in one spot uh, for the evening... Uh, was an interesting thing, an interesting idea, and they had meet and greets set up, and we'll have a look at what some of those are. Now, they got to the number 50 by including a number of Star Wars villains as well, so basically the bad guys from multiple Star Wars movies. And so um, they didn't show those onto the stage as well as uh, Captain Barbosa or Maleficent. Maleficent was here represented as a video. She came back at the end of the night um, on the stage for the fireworks named Villainy in the Sky. We'll get to the fireworks later. So this is what most of the setup looked like, where the characters were available for you to come meet. There was a dance party in the Disney Junior area for Guardians of the Galaxy with some Orasma photos up at the front. That's where they add things in digitally afterwards. This is the setup on the stage, and you've got the Star-Lord and Gamera here for you to meet. Uh, now, there was a barrier set up between you and them, so they walked along the barrier, and so uh, that way... They were kind of always visible to people, and they just took photos. They had a couple of special drinks available. Uh, even the bars were crowded, actually. It was very crowded to get into uh, any of the meet and greets and to any of the shows, as well as a special cupcake. Now, the Streets of America was one of the places where they had people set up. You can kind of see the Bowler Hat guy over in the corner here. Um, and then Corella and Facilier were under this awning over here. And then, so they had special lighting set up. You can see some of it... Um, raining down from above, so to speak, there on those um, rooftops. Sean Yu's uh, setup, and Constantine was not uh, visible from the stage, but uh, what Constantine was it had to be inside the, um, the Muppet store because what we're dealing with here is the actual puppet from the actual uh, Muppets Most Wanted movie and including the actual performer. So the, um, the Muppet voice and performer and all of that. So all of it was um, a, a true experience. And then there was a giant line. I'll actually go back a slide. You can see there was a, something of a three-hour line outside for Constantine. And so this Constantine Muppet would interact with people. You could see him uh, looking left and right and talking to them and making jokes and so forth. And it was uh, just an actual experience to go see Constantine stuck in his gulag. They had some walk-around characters. Um, most of the Star Wars characters were walk-around characters. Um, some free face painting options, um, themed, of course, to the uh, uh, villains Unleashed. And you can see that they were, um, you know, had come up with things original just for this particular show. And that was kind of an interesting, nice way to do it. Oogie Boogie's Freaky Funhouse show was held in the Beauty and the Beast Theater. Theater of the Stars, and it uh, involves a lot of blacklight and dancers, and Oogie Boogie, of course, and a, a guy who was obviously a plant taken from the audience. 
uh, and then three acts, um, a sword swallower, and then guys, a guy, guy and girl who shot crossbows and at small targets and at each other. And it was an actual thing. It was a thing of skill. Uh, and then fire dancers who would uh, breathe fire and uh, twirl fire and um, uh, unfortunately also, or perhaps fortunately, depending on your point of view, also do things on stage that were not usually seen at a Disney show. So the, the show had an erotic subtext to it, I think you could say. Oogie Boogie's dance show was uh, certainly the most unique uh, of the offerings at this particular event, ended with streamers on everyone, and that was the end of the show. One last food item to show you. They've got um, barbecued, um, well, they've got barbecue pork and a chili dog and macaroni and cheese hot dogs over in Fair, uh, Fairfax Fair. This is um, near Tower of Terror, stamped with villains on them, kind of burned in the buns. So that was an interesting idea. The Club Evil is the renaming of Brown Derby for the event, and they had things like uh, crispy hot wings, or actually they were pork hot wings, I believe they were, crispy pork wings, um, with a pepper sauce. So you can see what the special menu was at the Club Evil. Now this is what the fireworks stage show looked like. Maleficent came out, a live action Maleficent, of course. And then they had the fireworks kind of uh, exploding over everything, and it was a wonderful finale, actually. No, completely worth it. Over to Epcot. This is obviously a different day. Uh, we found the electric vehicle charging stations up at the front of the disabled section. And you can see that this is what the, the pump, so to speak, looks like. And it's hard to read in there, but the charge says 35 cents per kilowatt hour. And so for those of you who are interested in what the rates might be. In the uh, Japan Pavilion, this um, this uh, Kat, uh, Katsura, I've forgotten the name of, the, um, of this actual... Um, a little stand up at the front of the walkway has been here and the signage has all been here except for this sign across the top where they've added some English and you can see the reason I took the, sh the shot from this far back is you can see that most of the signage visible from the walkway is in Japanese and so I think this is a good move to actually add some uh, English to the signage so people won't have to get all the way close to find out what it is. Also showing you um, the Figment comic book for sale at Epcot. Uh, you see version of our episode number one and then the uh, edition number three uh, which tells the story of Dreamfinder and Figment and having their own little exploits how they met or actually got created and so forth and then this popcorn stand near the Imagination Pavilion caught our eye for these little signs up at the top first I've been seeing those at places like um, coffee stands as well the Joffrey's coffee has those so I'm not sure how new they were in this popcorn car but it caught my eye and then as we got closer we realized they have flavored popcorn, and I don't know how long that's been there. Cheddar, buffalo, blue cheese, sour cream, and chive. And here's what they look like, and just in the cart next to it, um, that's what those popcorns are. Orange cheese, it says on that side. All right, this was our... Um, our question last time for where in Walt Disney World was this? I think I've got a slide out of place, actually. Uh, the answer was given um, by many of you in the comment section. It was celebrate a dream come true. So this is the next one. Where in Walt Disney World was this? I'm not going to give you any hints. It is your job to make a guess in the comment section, and we'll see you next time if you are correct. That does it for us this time around. Thank you, as always, for your attention, and we will catch you next time.